afternoon. My name is Monique Bolt and I am Associate Vice President for Enrollment and Campus Visitation. I am delighted to welcome you to today's virtual school counselor presentation. We have a wonderful program in store for you today. You will have an opportunity to learn more about what makes the University of New Haven so unique and a wonderful fit for your students through our admissions overview. You will also have a chance to hear from our Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion, Dr. Lorenzo Boyd, and our Dean of Students and Chief Student Affairs Officer, Dr. Ophelia Rowe Allen, on why diversity and inclusion matter here at the University of New Haven. Lastly, you will hear from some of our current students on their perspectives as it relates to DEI initiatives on our campus. The University of New Haven is committed to fostering a campus climate based on mutual respect and inclusion, one in which people from diverse backgrounds feel valued, accepted, and appreciated. Now, I am pleased to welcome Brittany Bach, Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions, who will deliver our admissions welcome and overview. Enjoy the presentation. Hello, my name is Brittany Bach, Associate Director of Admissions in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of New Haven. I'm gonna be doing a brief admissions overview, going over some basic university information, as well as the application process. So to begin, we are called the University of New Haven, but we're located in West Haven, Connecticut. Fun fact, we were founded in New Haven on Yale's campus back in 1920, but we moved to suburban West Haven in 1960 and have been on this physical plot of land since. As we're in the year 2021, we are currently celebrating our academic centennial year. So in recognition of 100 years of success, we did unveil some new programs as well as a new building on campus, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment. But I did wanna note that the university has been recognized by a lot of different organizations not gonna go into detail about all of them for you today, but I do wanna highlight my personal favorite. We've actually been recognized by the Prince Review as one of the best 386 colleges, but more specifically within this ranking, as recently as two years ago, we were in the top 20 for career services. So we've actually been recognized as a leader in getting our students out into a job after they graduate, which is what it's all about. But like I said, in recognition of our centennial, we did just open a brand new academic building called the Bergami Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. This building has no traditional classrooms, but actually has maker space where students can change the classroom to fit their needs and start designing what they're coming up with in their minds, as well as an esports center for our new esports and gaming students, as well as our esports varsity and club teams, which is actually sponsored by HyperX. Now, if you're not familiar with the area, West Haven is a unique location to have a college campus because quite literally, no matter which direction you turn, you have an entirely different feel. Right behind campus, just a mile and a half, we have the beach. To the right of campus, about a 15 minute drive, we have the city of New Haven, which is a college city. There's four universities in the city and two on the outskirts. We're one of the ones on the outskirts, but six different universities that fill New Haven, so full of college age students. Also, it's really well known for its food home to world famous Frank Pepe's Pizza, as well as Louis Lunch, which is where the original hamburger was invented in the United States. They still serve it like they originally did, which is on toast and with no condiments. If you turn left out of our main entrance, we're located on something called the Boston Post Road, which is nonstop restaurants and stores, going down to the state's largest mall, which is about a 10 minute drive down the road. Inside the mall is a movie theater and between us and the mall, every chain restaurant or store you could possibly imagine. So there's a lot for our students to do within a 10 to 15 minute radius. We also have two train stations near campus. We have Metro North and Amtrak available, and we're centrally located between New York City and Boston, which is great for internship placement. On campus, we're small to medium. We have 5,000 full-time undergraduate students and over 100 programs of study, split between our five different colleges. In our College of Arts and Sciences, we have most of the typical programs that you're used to hearing of, including some unique ones like marine affairs, which is different than marine biology, genetics and biotechnology, music, music industry, music and sound recording, film production, and forensic psychology. Our School of Health Sciences houses our programs related to the healthcare industry like dental hygiene, nutrition, health sciences, our newest public health, paramedicine, and more. Our Pompeii College of Business houses most of our typical business programs like business management, accounting, finance, et cetera, 
But some of the more unique ones in this college would be business analytics, hospitality, tourism, and management, sport management, and our newest esports and gaming. Now, this college is actually AACSB accredited, which puts us in the top 5% in the world for business. We also have a Tagliatella College of Engineering, which houses most of our engineering programs like mechanical, electrical, civil, industrial systems, most of which are ABA accredited programs. But the most unique program in this college by far would have to be cybersecurity, which actually has been certified by the NSA. And then last but certainly not least, we have our Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences, named after Dr. Henry C. Lee, the world famous forensic scientist. And this uh, college houses forensic science, criminal justice, national security, homeland security, and by far the most unique program in this college would be fire science, which is actually the study of fire. Once again, over 100 different programs for students to choose from between these five colleges. And if a student does apply into a major, they will start in it their first semester freshman year. However, students can apply undeclared and have some time to figure it out. We also have some specialty tracks that students can add on to their degree, like pre-medical and pre-law, which are open to all majors, as well as our honors program, where students can apply into that after they've been accepted to the university. But the one that I want to highlight today is our dual degree programs. We actually have programs where students can apply into their undergraduate program and be pre-accepted into a master's degree. What's great about this is that we have direct entry programs where students can be pre-admitted into that master's and go directly from their undergraduate into that master's degree without needing to reapply. We also have accelerated programs where students can condense the bachelor's and master's into the same time frame. So we are constantly adding new dual degree programs. You can see a current listing at newhaven.edu slash dual degree. But the reason why we have so many of these is on average, our students that are graduating with their master's are earning $30,000 more in their first job over our students that just have their bachelor's. So students are actually uh, looked at automatically when they apply to the university for their undergraduate program for the dual degree programs as well. Now we have 85 different minors and certificates or things that the students can add on to their degree to separate themselves after they graduate and make themselves more marketable and over 35 different master's degrees. Our average class size is 22 and we have a 16 to one faculty to student ratio and over 200 clubs and organizations. So there's so much that students can do outside of the classroom. Everything from major specific clubs to I kid you not, we have something called a Jedi knitting club and a ghost hunting club and pretty much everything in between, including marching band, theater, dance, cheer, our own radio station, ROTC, and Greek life. We also offer athletics at three different levels. We are at Division II and compete in the Northeast 10 Conference for our varsity teams, but we also have club sports, which are extremely active and compete against other universities, and then intramurals, where we form a team with our friends on campus and versus other teams on campus. Now, looking at return on investment, once again, I think it's the one of the most important things that we could talk about as we go through the college search process. But for our class of 2018, 97% were in a full-time job in a related field of study to their degree or continuing their education within a year of graduation. And the six month rate is actually 95%. So our students are graduating and getting out into a job, which again is what it's all about. What do our students look like? We're about 50% male, 50% female. We're pretty close to that 50-50 line. And 65% of our overall student body lives on campus. It's closer to 90% of our first year students. So we are not a suitcase school. We have a heavy residential environment. The majority of our students are coming from out of state, out of the out of state populations. Our largest are New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, the surrounding states. We're in the double digits from Florida, California, Puerto Rico, Texas, and we have 55 different foreign countries on campus. So students are coming from all over. And so, yes, we do provide residential life for our students. Students can live on campus. We have both underclassmen and upperclassmen residence halls. You can do a tour of all of our different buildings right at newhaven.edu slash virtual. We have a first year residence hall, which will take you through the five different first year buildings. And we have an upperclassmen residence hall tour, which will take you through both the on and off campus facilities that we have available for the students.
Every single building at the university is completely different. And we only offer one that's traditional style, which is a room and a common bathroom at the end of the hall. Everything else is suite style or apartment style. One of the options that we have for residential life is living learning communities, or we call LLCs for short, because that's a mouthful. And this is where everyone in the room and everyone on the floor is all the same major or interested in the same area. And this helps with the transition from high school to college and is available to our incoming first year students. It is first come first serve based on enrollment. Now, every single student at the university will do some form of experiential education before they graduate. And this is split between faculty mentored research opportunities, internships and co-ops, service learning courses and studying abroad. This is a listing of places that our students consistently intern at and get jobs at across the 100 different programs. But of course, there's a long list for each and every major. And looking at studying abroad in more detail, we have over 100 different programs where students can study abroad for a semester, a full year, or two weeks over the summer and winter breaks. Those two week programs are program specific. Now, we do have a satellite campus in Prado, Italy which allows our students to study abroad in Italy for the same price as coming to West Haven, Connecticut. There's scholarships, financial aid, everything transfers over. The only difference is the plane ticket there and back. We do have a very unique first year abroad program where our students can go straight from high school to the Prado campus, which is great for students that are in a program that's typically more rigorous and harder to study abroad in the later years. Campus safety is one of the fastest growing questions across college visits in the nation. So it's important to touch on that as well. Very briefly, we are tier one and tier two accredited. We're one of the only private universities in the state of Connecticut to have an accredited police force. We actually have 22 real sworn in West Haven police officers as our campus police. They have the right to arrest and carry a firearm and do 24 seven patrol of our campus 365 days a year. On campus, all of the green areas and parking lots are on security footage. There's over 300 cameras. And of course, we have the blue light system, as well as a text alert system that both parents and students can sign up for. We even have two smartphone apps, our LiveSafe app and a special app called the CoVerify, which is just for COVID-19. Now, once again, to briefly touch on the application process, for our first year incoming students, we are on the common application. The Common Application does have a $50 application fee when applying to us. However, we do provide application fee waivers to any students that visit our campus, both virtually and in person, as well as students that apply early. So if you have students that are interested in applying, they can reach out to us and we'd be happy to provide them with fee waiver information. In addition to the Common Application, we do require an official high school transcript, at least one letter of recommendation from an academic source, and this year we are test optional. So students can select on their application whether they would like their test scores to be considered or not. If they select consider scores, we will also require the SAT and ACT before completing that application. Our average GPA is a 3.5. Our average SAT is an 1150 and our average ACT is a 24. Now the transfer application process is a little bit different. They apply right on our website at newhaven.edu forward slash apply, and they submit their transcript from any and all colleges that they've attended. We are on rolling admissions, so the earlier students apply, the earlier they're gonna get a decision. However, we do have a couple different admissions tracks that they can choose from. Early decision is our binding decision. This is for students who are essentially committing to attend upon acceptance. In addition to those regular application materials, we do require them to do an interview with us and fill out a contract. And that deadline is December 1st. Early action provides students with a decision early, but they still have the action to choose wherever they wanna go. Our first early action is December 15th. And for students that need a little bit more time, our next deadline is February 15th. Anything after that is really considered a regular decision. We do accept prior credits. For AP courses, it's a three or above. For some English courses, it must be a four. For IB courses, it's typically a four or above on the exam. And for college level courses, either through dual enrollment, a local community college, or transfer students, it's a C or above in a college level course that is a hundred level course or higher. In theory, the credits should come in. It's about where they come in into that academic program. Now, all together with tuition, room and board, and all additional student fees, a residential student is looking at about 
59,924 to attend for the upcoming year. For commuter students, they would just pay the tuition and student fee. Now there are plenty of different ways that we try to cut this cost down for our students. First is our scholarships. We do offer academic merit-based scholarships right at acceptance for all of our students, including our new first year students, as well as our transfer students. Merit-based scholarships range from 10,000 to 26,000 and are based on their academic progress before applying. So those are awarded right at acceptance and renewable for the remainder of their undergraduate program. Additional scholarships after that point include a scholarship for being in our honors program, scholarship for being in the marching band. Students that excel in the College of Business can be eligible for the Pompeii scholarship and students that submit a music or art portfolio for review can be eligible for a portfolio scholarship. We also have a transfer honor society scholarship. Beyond our scholarships, we do have financial aid. Students must fill out the free application for federal student aid and submit that to us in order for us to make a financial aid package for them. As a private institution, we can and do award university grants, which is money that we give to them that they do not need to pay back. So we highly encourage every student to submit the FAFSA to us. But by applying to the university and filling out the FAFSA, they are automatically considering themselves for all the aid that we have for them. And once they get that financial aid package back, they can actually do the math and see how much it'll cost them to attend. The average student is looking at about 27,000. Now we offer a plethora of different visit opportunities, both virtual and on campus. For virtual visits, we have information sessions, open houses, and accepted student events. The benefit for the accepted student events and open houses is that we have actual program faculty available to meet live with students and do a deep dive into the majors. We also have on-campus visits through our one-on-one -on -one campus visits, which are a personalized information session with admissions, a personalized campus tour with a current student, and our weekend walkthrough tours. We also have a unique option called our drive-through campus tour, where students can stay in the comfort and safety of their vehicle and tour our campus, where the tour actually pops up on their smart device. All of our different visit opportunities will at newhaven.edu slash visit. We're on pretty much every social media platform. Our handle's at you New Haven, so feel free to follow us. With that, I will say thank you so much for listening to me today. If you have any additional questions for admissions that are not answered, you can always feel free to email us at admissions at newhaven.edu or give us a phone call at 203-932-7319. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Lorenzo Boyd. I'm the Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion at the University of New Haven. Here at UNH, there's a concerted effort to make diversity, equity, inclusion, access, and belonging a central focus in all we do. The University of New Haven celebrates individuals of all social identities. We believe that as members of Charger Nation, our social cultural differences ignite intellectual growth and foster a culture of understanding that embraces our ever-changing society. The University of New Haven embraces diversity and recognizes our responsibility to foster diverse, inclusive, and welcoming environments in which all members of Charger Nation of all backgrounds and of all identities can learn, work, and live together. We benefit from academic, social, cultural developments that arise from a diverse campus that is committed to our DEI principles. We have a responsibility as a community and as individuals to address and remove barriers that keep chargers from being their best. We have courses and academic pathways that foster inclusion and belonging, like our gender and sexuality minor and our race and ethnic studies minor. Most academic units have required courses to help foster a sense of belonging, and our faculty and staff participate in trainings that ensure safe and inclusive spaces inside and outside of the classroom. To ensure that we are reaching our mark in our DEI efforts, we conduct regular surveys of our campus climate to assess the well-being of our entire community. We also provide tools and training opportunities for our students, faculty, and staff to become proficient at working in a diverse and inclusive environment. 
We encourage and embrace participation in ongoing dialogue, engagement, and education to critically examine and thoughtfully respond to the changing realities of our community. Diversity, equity, inclusion, acceptance, and access enrich Charger Nation and is instrumental in the progress for institutional success and for fulfillment of our university mission. We're looking forward to new and returning charges, adding to the diversity and sense of inclusion that we're building. We look forward to helping all chargers be their best. Now, it is with great pleasure I introduce to you my colleague and friend, Dr. Ophelia Rowe Allen. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. As Dr. Boyd mentioned, my name is Dr. Ophelia Rowe Allen, and I am the Dean of Students here at the University of New Haven. Today, I would like to focus your attention on why diversity, inclusion, and belonging matter at the University of New Haven. At the University of New Haven, we are moving beyond diversity to greater inclusion and belonging. To be inclusive and create a sense of belonging, we must understand this concept of diversity. Diversity is all about us and not the other at the University of New Haven. We acknowledge that we can be part of the groups that are excluded and part of groups that are overly included. As a charger community, we create inclusion pathways to make a difference. To do this, we engage in courageous conversations, programs and activities that encourage our growth and development. As a community, we urge each other to intentionally move out of our comfort zones and lean into areas that make us uncomfortable. We create spaces for individuals to develop the capacity to find their voices. We provide opportunities for individuals to speak their truth, stay engaged, to learn who they are and how they can contribute to a global society. Our mission is to prepare students for an ever-changing world and engage with others who are different from them. Some of our programs and events at the University of New Haven that keep the community engaged, shape and shift diversity and inclusion and support belonging include the following. Our Campus Climate Coalition, a space for all individuals to come together on a bi-weekly basis to discuss topics on diversity and inclusion. Our Flex and Dream programs, mentoring programs that focus on underrepresented students within their first year of college. We have numerous multicultural organizations that allow students to find social support as they navigate their college journey. We are also part of a Campus Pride Index that measures our commitment to LGBTQ plus inclusive policies, programs, and practices. The Myatt Center for Diversity and Inclusion, promoting cultural diversity, awareness, and sensitivity throughout the campus community. New Student Onboarding supports our underrepresented students in their transition to college. We also focus on student support within the realm of career development. We create intentional relationships with employers interested in diversity and inclusion in the workplace. These relationships focus on hiring underrepresented students, including our black African-American students, international students, and LGBTQ students. We have set up processes to address not just academic needs, but basic and cultural needs, such as our career closet and campus food pantry program. We are aware that not all our students live on campus. We know that underrepresented students who are commuters struggle to, to connect on a college campus due to the various responsibilities outside of being a student. At the University of New Haven, we recognize these challenges, developing ways to keep them connected and ensure that they succeed by providing them access to the resources available to them on campus. And finally, because we know that diversity, inclusion, and belonging matter, 
We at the University of New Haven intentionally highlight these areas as critical components to who we are as a community, the support we provide for our students, and what we know, do, and value as a community of learners with various social identities and social cultural backgrounds. Thank you. And we welcome all to the Charger community. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Adam McPhillips. My pronouns are he, him, and his. And I am a sophomore studying business management here at the University of New Haven. I am from Mays Landing, New Jersey. I am the current president of an LGBTQ plus advocacy club called Spectra. We focus primarily on gender identity, expression, and exploration. I also serve on the House of Representatives for Spectra at USGA, which is our undergraduate student government association. Within USGA, I serve on the Inclusion and Advocacy Committee. Outside of Spectra and USGA, I regularly attend our university's chapter of NAACP, Campus Climate Coalition, and I serve on the Idea Council subcommittee that puts out the Campus Climate Survey. One of my favorite events that I went to was in the fall of 2019, and that was Pride's Second Chance Prom. Pride is another one of our LGBTQ plus advocacy clubs here on campus. Many LGBTQ plus people didn't get to experience their junior or senior proms in high school. I went to my senior prom, but I didn't get to fully enjoy that experience because I was not yet out as a transgender man. So I was there presenting female and in a dress. It wasn't very fun for me. And through Pride and their second chance prom, I felt like I finally found a community that I could connect with. There are a ton of different multicultural organizations here on campus that allow all students to find their own sense of community. Some examples of those are the Women in Business Club, which is new this year, Chi Upsilon Sigma National Latin Sorority Incorporated, the International Students Association, and the Black Student Union. One of the biggest things that the university could do to improve in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion is adding a pride center for our LGBTQ plus students. I'm really happy that this is already in the works and cannot wait to see all the positive changes it will make along with the Myatt Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amber Marrero. I'm a senior studying cybersecurity and networks with a minor in both behavioral economics and sociology from the Bronx, New York. Some of my campus involvement includes being a sister of Edmundad de Sigma Iota Alpha Incorporada, also known as SIA for short, I am also a member of the NAACP, as well as a member of the Black Student Union. Now, one of my favorite events that promote diversity and inclusion is actually our Black and Latino Alumni Weekend, also known as BLAU. And ways that I think that the university can promote diversity on campus is by supporting and promoting our multicultural RSOs through discussions. <music> Hi everyone, my name is Mikey Calabrese. I am a senior here at the university. I study sport management and minor in behavioral economics here in our fast, tro fast track program. I'm originally from Torrington, Connecticut, so I'm not too far from home when I'm at school. Um, and I'm actually a commuter student to the university. So when talking about just favorite events that celebrate diversity and inclusion here at the university, I can't really limit it to just one. I think that our clubs and organizations do a fantastic job of putting forward really educational events all throughout the academic year. So really give credit to them because it allows students to not have just one opportunity to go and experience events like these, and they have the ability to go and experience more. Um, but two things that were implemented this year that are, will continue moving forward that I'm really excited for. Um, we have two special graduation ceremonies. So one is called the Celebration of Excellence. So it's for our students of color and really celebrating their journey that they've gone through throughout their college experience. And then the other is a lavender graduation for our LGBT students at the university as well. So it's really great to honor those students and recognize what they have gone through for their um, time here at the university. Um, in terms of what I'm involved with on campus, so I am involved in a couple of organizations on campus. Um, I am the current president for our sports industry club. And so I also serve as the senator for varsity athletics within our undergraduate student government association. Um, as a university, I think that we have a diverse group of students. Um, we are a predominantly white institution, though. So um, what's really nice is that the students here have um, the city of New Haven to also go to. So it allows there to be some kind of diverse population, not only on campus, but off campus as well. That creates a really cool environment that the university has to offer. 
In terms of trying to better our campus, especially um, on the DEI scope, I think there's lots of steps that can be taken because I think it's an ongoing process. And I think that the university has the opportunity to keep improving itself day in and day out. Um, and I think that what's really awesome is that we're taking these steps already in terms of training faculty, students, uh, everyone on campus to be more inclusive inside the classroom and outside the classroom. We also have been um, reevaluating Common Core courses to fit more of a DEI scope and making it more um, educational for our students across all ends, as well as making new capital investment projects for underrepresented groups on campus. So I think it's really cool that the university is taking it, um, the initiative to make sure that it's a welcoming, safe space for all students on campus. Hi, my name is Debika, and I'm a junior here at the University of New Haven, and I'm a mechanical engineering major. I'm originally from the Caribbean, Guyana to be more specific. I was in Florida and then I moved down here to Connecticut for the University of New Haven because of their amazing engineering program. And moving to the US has been a big change for me, especially the huge cultural difference. So when I moved here, I found the Caribbean Students Association at the University of New Haven which has been such a great way to connect with other students who has the similar background as I did, also learning about new cultures from the different Caribbean countries, and I'm still learning about them, and I'm always excited to learn new things. And I'm also a part of SWE, which is the Society for Women Engineers, and that way I get to connect with more students who are also in my major, and I get to connect with professors also. I do think that the University of New Haven has a diverse group of students because there are like all different types of students around campus and there are also other different uh, clubs and organizations on campus. However, I think if we have way more events throughout the semester, it would reach out to more students who would be a part of these clubs and it is also a great way to promote uh, diversity on campus. Thank you.